This illusion is called It Hurts to Be. I've not kept track of this headless series, and it's a bit hard to quantify as some of the themes of my work, at least as of late, overlap. However, there is another headless figure here on the screen, peeling its body open for kicks, I guess. The thing that drew me to this concept in particular was the arms, hands, and the legs, along with the feet. The torso is there sort of as, sort of as an afterthought, though it is undeniably suggestive. The back arching, symbolic of maybe passion, pleasure, yet there's a pain to it. If you look closer, I distorted the arms more than how I drafted them to look in the concept sketch. And it, I'm a bit disappointed that they turned out more flowy than sharp like I had envisioned them. I'll have to work on that because I do like more flowing strokes than like short, abrupt stuff. I'm not good at that. Um, the juxtaposition of the legs and feet kicking is almost like joyfully while the hands probe and expose the body's inner workings. It brings the question to mind, why though? Why was this what I was motivated to paint? What popped into my head? This was the last of the three paintings I did on this day. I researched swords a while back in reference to a story I was working on, and I found it interesting that people don't think Africans historically use swords. I won't make the obvious remark on that, but Africans fought and ugh, spears aren't a weapon of combat. The closest thing would be a bow, and I doubt they use bows either. Needs to say, as I've been using my signature stamp to sign off paintings, it reminded me not only of Saturn, but of sickle swords, also known as scythes, yeah, used for harvest. I do love Saturn, I really do, and I love how it just, it just pops up, hey! Um, but Africans use primarily curved swords, and their throwing knives were also curved, like, to hook and tear flesh. Most of their swords, except for the ones designated for execution, were meant to inflict fatal things, but like a slow, sort of torturous fatal wound. A disemboweling. It really got me into swords for a week or two. Daggers even, they're surprisingly affordable. I came across them on Etsy, I'm like, ugh, the craftsmanship. There's that whole show on, I think it's a history channel, about blacksmiths competing to make different swords. I love that. That's hot. <laughs> Like, in the most non-sexual way. But it's also just like, that's hot. Oh, wow. 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 What year is it? That's so, it's just. And the thing with the sickle sword stuff was that I had just come off a heavy, a sword heavy reading spurt. But it was all, you know, most swords straight, Eurocentric swords, I guess you'd call them. I'd come off a Eurocentric sword heavy reading spurt. Sword Heart by T. Kingfisher. I think I had also, before that, read The Paladin's Hope and The Paladin's Grace. There was some time between when I read The Paladin's Strength, so I don't know exactly when I read it. I read it almost immediately after it was published, but there was a big gap between... I don't know, it was like a year, maybe two years, between the publishing of the third of the trilogy. Anyway, I also read the legendary Ein Ing Ing. Ing, um, by Kate Stradling. You should look into that because she's an independent author. Um, so, you know, um, buying her books would really help her financially. And um, the legendary Ing, Ing, oh my god, I did it again, is just the female retelling of Beowulf. Beowulf. I can't, I am not good at pronunciation. And the Paladin Strength is the best one. It the fact that it's a gay romance I think is not is not 
the point. The medieval saw a- aspects to it, and the the gift of one of the characters knowing that something died while also being a mortician of sorts. Knowing what it feels like when gods die. That reminds me, I've been subscribed to Ask a Mortician since I saw slash heard her in Midnight Gospel, yet I've never watched a single video. I think I only subscribed because I thought it would be like watching her book that I couldn't read because no one gifted it to me. (laughs) Although it was on my wish list, which is why I was like, oh, by subscribing, I'll be sending a universal message on a wavelength specifically to my mother and or my sister. Buy me this book. Ask a mortician. I think, yeah, that's what the book was called. Um, my family thinks I'm too morbid. I think that's why they didn't buy it for me. But the thing about morbidity is that it's always been sweet with me. And yes, that is a pun on my work. Thank you for watching. If you take anything away from this video, it is art. Truly art. And art goes on. So I will in my next video.